Hi everyone, I'm Mick. Welcome to my shop. So I've been uh, noticing that uh, there seems to be a few guys who, uh, you know, in the machinist uh, YouTube community who are uh, heavily into 3D printers. Um, Chuck Bomberito is one. He uh, recently did a video, a couple videos on some uh, stops for his uh, lathe that he made mostly out of 3D printed parts. And uh, another one's obviously uh, uh, Clow 42. Um, stuff he does is amazing, well just amazing in general. Um, then there's some other guys who are just starting to get into it, um, starting to you know play around with them and figure out how they can you know get the printer set up and calibrated and all that stuff. And then there's other guys who haven't done anything. I've had my 3D printer now for about a year and a half, and the first nine months I had it, I think it was running pretty much 24/7. Um, I consider my 3D printer to be a tool and I uh, primarily use it for shop organization. So I thought I would run through some of the things I've uh, printed to aid in shop organization and um, you know maybe you'll uh, have some uh, some ideas of your own and uh, if anybody wants any of the, the plans for any of these things that I uh, have uh, made, I made most of them myself in FreeCAD I can send you the CAD files or I can send you the STL files. Some of them I've already put up on Thingiverse. Uh, but um, before we get into that, I got a bunch of stickers. So uh, I want to go through those real quick and uh, give these guys uh, a little bit of credit for uh, all the absolutely fine work they do. And uh, it's just amazing, the, uh, the, the machinist YouTube community. I, I'm so happy to start to be a part of it now. So anyway, I'll move you over to the uh, welding table here where I uh, will go through the stickers and then I'll uh, start showing you the uh, things I've printed. Alright, so let's go through uh, these stickers. I must say I'm uh, really pleased. I got a bunch of them real quickly. So first one here is from Rusty Knox. Of course, we all know who Rusty Knox is. I, uh, I tell you, this guy is amazing. He needs no introduction. If you uh, are following me and you haven't seen Rusty Knox, then you've been living under a rock. Um, Rusty just recently got a, a mill, uh, but I've learned so much from him uh, regarding the use of the shaper. So we'll get uh, in there. He says, uh, it's great pleasure that I send you these stickers printed on eco paper. So, uh, anyway, thanks, Rusty. And then, got some stickers here from Chris McDonald, Just One Guy Metalworks. So, a couple different ones. And some stickers from Dan Dobbs, House of Broken Dobbs. Dan is uh, is quite a character. He uh, he's very talented. The uh, the things he fixes, and I know right now he's going through some work with uh, a shaper as well, and some adventures on that with his uh, with his vice. So we'll get one of those up on the on the board. And we got a sticker here from EC Workshop, Ed Kood. Um, Ed lives in Tennessee, I believe. He's a retired machinist. And another one. If you're uh, not following ARW, then uh, 
dig out your dig yourself out from underneath that rock. So Harold Waters. Thank you, Harold. And Everett's Workshop in uh, up in the Great White North in Canada. Everett uh, is uh, trying to get his new shop into shape. And uh, Everett's one of the guys I was, I was talking about. I think he uh, just recently got a 3D printer. And then we got a couple stickers from Garden Tractor Boy. That uh, would be Joseph and uh, his dad Ian over in the UK. They uh, live on a farm out there. And boy, does Joseph have a, collector, a collection of garden tractors, um, as well as a large collection of, of vices. I don't know if you've seen his video on all the record vices he has. They've, uh, they've got some pretty neat stuff there. And then finally, not uh, last but not least, is a sticker from uh, James, uh, Jim's Workshop, and uh, Rusty's latest video. He uh, got one of Jim's stickers as well. So I don't know if he goes by James or Jim, and I think uh, Rusty was a little confused on that. So uh, anyway, a lot of great stickers, and I will uh, get these up on the board and give you a quick view of that and then we'll move on to the 3D printed stuff. Alright, I've got all the new stickers up on the board there and uh, I'll be putting links to all of the uh, guys channels down in the description. So let's take a look at some plastic that I printed. So on to the topic of uh, 3D printing and shop organization. Uh, one of the things I first started out with on uh, organizing things was uh, trying to figure out a way to get my collets and things like chamfer bits and all that kind of stuff organized. And um, I found these R8 collet holder plans on Thingiverse. The nice thing about these is you just print as many as you need and they all lock together and uh, they, they stand up, they fit perfectly in the, uh, the top drawer underneath my mill. Um, this set here for the ER32 collets is another one that I found on Thingiverse. Um, I have one for my metric collets and one for uh, the uh, Imperial SAE collets. Um, this set here, uh, these are 3C collets for my lathe. Um, I probably one of the first things I, uh, I 3D, uh, I designed in CAD and 3D printed. Um, incredibly simple, you know, just a box with a bunch of holes poked in it. Um, I learned quite a bit as I was doing things like this about, you know, how to uh, make make things fit. These are, some of these are a little tight. Uh, but they're good, it's not too difficult. Um, and then I just started doing it for everything else. You know, these roundover bits, the uh, chamfering bits, these welding type chamfering bits. And then this one here, this, I did not print this. This is from Randy Richards. But this is another idea of something you could do. He uh, prints these boxes for his dovetail cutters. Um, these uh, I bought these dovetail cutters from him when he was uh, having a sale when he was adding on to his shop and it's a great little case you know keeps everything organized it's got the extra carbide inserts and screws and everything. So I'm going to take you around and show you some of the other things I uh, have done. They're not easily moved 
so uh, I'll be hand holding the camera here. So some of you may have seen the video I did of the upgrades and improvements to my mill. Um, I have one of these 3D printed little boxes that I uh, just double sided taped to the side of the mill. I also have one here on the cabinet above the lathe. Um, just a handy place to keep pencils and scribes and things like that. Now on to uh, some of the things that uh, might be a bit more interest to some people. Um, these are my imperial taps and dies. Um, I haven't figured out anything to better to do with the dies other than just line them up like this. I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. But taps, these little boxes, I 3D printed them. They're in various sizes to fit the the uh, the size of tap up to the larger ones and they work great I uh, have this is all like I said Imperial and then this drawer is metric then we come over to this cabinet here this is my drill storage cabinet so these are some of the smaller numbered sizes. Fractional sizes. And again, I just uh, decided on three or four or five different sizes, whatever I needed, um, and uh, 3D printed however many I needed. I happen to find this particular cabinet Sorry about that. That is the automatic drain on my air compressor. Anyway, I happened to find this uh, cabinet on uh, sale on, for sale on Craigslist, and it works perfect for uh, for drill bits. Now, the last thing that I've done, or I'm in the process of doing, actually, is organization of hardware. This is really a test or a, a pilot of this system to see if it'll work for me. I did not come up with this idea. Uh, a guy named Alexander Chappelle has a YouTube site. Um, he does a lot of woodworking and other things, but he designed a, sport, a hardware organization system that's modular and along with the cabinet and everything that, that they go in. And I liked it, but I just needed something a little simpler. So I came up with these little boxes. They uh, have room to print the label right on top of them. And uh, they're an inch and a half high. They happen to fit in these drawers in my tool chests perfectly. I will be building a cabinet for them. But you can see these are my, these are screws. Um, everything down here from 448 by uh, in stainless steel, uh, you name it. Um, the smaller ones, if I want to get something out of them, I just pull it out and dump it in my hand, in my palm. So I spent a lot of time printing those kinds of things, bolts, uh, grub screws, more bolts, Over here at the one next to it, washers, lock washers, nuts. So I did use standard sizes. Um, they're two inches wide. Uh, they, they go up in increments of two inches. So two by two, two by four, two by six, um, six by six for this one. For some reason, I have a lot of quarter 20 stainless steel acorn nuts. Uh, this drawer is a lot of metric over here on this side and then uh, Alan, uh, 
Allen head uh, cap screws. And then whatever these little things are, I think these are called drive pens, something like that. They don't actually have threads. So I think, you know, as I, as I mentioned in a previous video, my dad was a millwright and I got a lot of this stuff from him. So, so that is pretty much what I've been using my 3D printer for. Um, I did uh, have an experiment. I tried making, I don't know if you saw the video I did on making the ashtray lid. Well, as I said in that video, the design went through a lot of different iterations. Um, the first one, the intent was to have a bowl, the kind that opens up, uh, it's split and it swings open. And this was my attempt at making a sheet metal die. It's 3D printed plastic. I did actually use it um, and it worked. Um, deformed the plastic, or not the plastic, deformed the sheet metal around these edges more than uh, was acceptable. But I think it, uh, if a couple things, this was a mistake. It's too small. I, um, when I d designed it in CAD, for some reason I had it way off. Um, it uh, should be closer to almost the size of the of the, the, the die block itself. And I think I may have needed to do it in uh, multiple steps in order to eliminate that deformation. But, so th these holes are for pins to align the, the die as it's uh, pressed in, uh, in my 20 ton press. This was an earlier attempt and I didn't uh, didn't make the bottom flat on it. It would have uh, would have probably been even worse. But there's a lot of things you can do with 3D printers, and uh, hopefully this will give some of you uh, some ideas. And if anybody would like any of these uh, CAD files or STL files or anything, just drop me a note. I uh, Put the ones I thought would be useful up on Thingiverse and the rest of them I just draw what I need as I need them. So thanks a lot and uh, take care.